Okay, class, let's take uh, Okay, you can off your mic now. Okay, huh? so now we are, we try to take a look, uh, uh, see uh, where, uh, where do we stop uh, previously. Huh? So remember, uh, we are still in the introduction. So it's in, the, in the introduction, we talk about the definition of the Abhidharma. So Abhidharma uh, basically is, it is the, uh, this is the Abhidharma, is from the Abhidharma Pitaka, huh? uh, Shakyamuni, huh? I mean, uh, according to the Shakyamuni teaching, it has been segregated to, uh, I mean, we call it as a Sutra, Vinaya, and Abhidharma. Huh? Then from here, after this session, the Abhidharma, we go to the, the next one, we, we try to understand regards uh, uh, the twofold method of so twofold method meaning to say that uh, 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 sometimes uh, in our sutra uh, it will mention in a more mandate way sometimes it's in the more ultimate way uh, in the mandate way meaning to say that uh, we were using a lot of uh, mean, uh, uh, we call it as a panyati uh, for example okay uh, a human uh, the animal they are talking, uh, so we call it as a mandate. Lah, huh? But in Abhidharma, basically, we don't see all this uh, conversation. We, we, we never heard about that. Uh, mostly, it's about the five aggregate only. Huh? So this is we call it as a two-fold method. Huh? And next, let's take a look. Huh? We come to this. It's a distinctive fe uh, feature of Abhidharma. Huh? So basically, we understand that Abhidharma basically, uh, we, uh, uh, Abhidharma here is mean the seven Abhidharma. We understand that uh, in Abhidharma, uh, this is uh, Amina. Uh, I mean, uh, it is quite structurally organized, and basically, uh, they categorize uh, how, according to the I mean, uh, one type, two type, three type, four type, something like that. Uh, in the quite uh, maybe tedious way uh, to express uh, the, da the, uh, the Dharma. Uh. Okay, so uh, now the way is the original of Abhidha Abhidharma. Basically, we got seven of Abhidharma, and mostly uh, they agree that. Uh, uh, not all from Buddha uh, saying lah, huh? so some actually uh, is the, I mean we call it as the work uh, uh, the, the Buddha disciple they have tried to redo some work huh? uh, basically academically uh, we admit that lah, huh? uh, some Buddha disciple have already rearranged to make it easy and simple for us to study huh? then next uh, original of Abhidharma now uh, now we come to the uh, then we come to the seven book uh, huh? so in seven book uh, huh? As we mentioned, okay, we got seven book of Abhidharma. Uh, here, here is the name for the seven book. Lah. So let's take a look. Huh? Uh, here is the name. Uh, 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 here. Now we we'll see seven book. Lah, huh? uh, the Vipaka, okay, uh, the Dhamma, uh, Datu Kata, Bukala Panyati, all this. Lah. I totally got seven books. Huh? Now the question is, uh, once we got seven books of Abhidharma, it is quite hard to understand. Huh? So there will be some commentary. The commentary is written by the Buddha disciple. Huh? So we have a commentary. But once uh, huh, we combine all this together, huh, it's too, too much work already. So what the people try to do, they will try to reread everything and rewrite everything. That's we call it as a word. We call it as a summary. Lah. That is Abhidhamata Sangha. Ha. So this is the version. Ah, Abhidhamata Sangha by Acharya Anuruddha. This is the version we are going to use it. Okay, ha. But since uh, the summary is too simple, so finally we have to come up another. We need some more commentary on the Sangha. Ha. Okay. Ha. So class, uh, so let me try to remind you a little bit. Lah. Let's see. So for example, chapter one, this is the chapter one. If you take a look here, the verse, uh, this is the Pali, this is the English. So this is uh, by Anuruddha. Uh, we call it uh, Abhidhamata Sangaha. But since it's too e simple and easy, so we need some commentary. Uh. So the commentary is from the guide. Uh, uh, okay, to make it, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 more comprehensively, I mean, that it can be explained in a more comprehensive way. Uh. Now we come to the commentary on the Sangaha. Yes. Uh, Guan San, can you please read the passage? Owing to? Owing to its extreme concision, the Abhidhamata Sangaha cannot be easily understood without explanation. Therefore, to elucidate its thirst and pity synopsis of the Abhidhamma philosophy, a great number of tikas or commentaries have been written upon it. 
In fact, this work has probably stimulated more commentaries than any other Pali text written not only in the Pali language, but also in the Burmese, Sinhala, Thai, and etc. Since the 15th century, Burma has been the international center of Abhidhamma studies, and therefore we find many commentaries written on it by Burmese scholars, both in Pali and in Burmese. Commentary on the Sangaha in Pali alone, number 19, of which the following are the most important. Abhidhamata Sangaha Tika, also known as the Horana Tika, the old commentary. This is a very small Tika written in Sri Lanka in the 12th, 12th century by an elder named Akariya Nawavimala. Nawan, Hoodie. Okay, I'll wait lah, uh, Kwan San. Uh, let me try to, I mean, uh, just... Um, okay, uh, uh, so I, I hope you can just... Okay, please read number four. And then okay. it's... Uh, 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 wait, uh, let me see. Uh, um, uh, Sumalanga, uh, Sumangalas. Uh, yes, okay. Okay, please read number two and number four will be good already. Huh? Please. Okay. Abhidhamma ta vibhavini tika or in brief the vibhavini written by Akariya Sumagalasami, pupil of the eminent Sri Lankan elder Sariputta Mahasami, also in the 12th century. This tika quickly supersedes the old commentary and is generally considered the most profound and reliable exegetical work of the Sangaha. In Burma, this work is known as Tika Gray, the famous commentary. The author is greatly respected for his erudition and mastery of the Abhidhamma. He relies heavily on, an, on older authorities such as the Abhidhamma, Anutika, and the Visuddhi Maga Mahatika, also known as the Paramat Paramatama Jusa. Although Lady Sawadi uh, criticized the Vibhavini extensively in his commentary on the Sangaha, his popularity has not, dis has not diminished but indeed has, uh, has even increased. And several Burmese scholars have risen to defend his against Lady Sawadi criticism. Uh, sorry, this is a Lady Siado. Okay, uh. Lady Siado. Uh, Lady Siado. Then we also read this as, as an Acharya. Let me see. Uh. Uh, Acha, uh, this is what we read as an Acharya. Uh. Okay, uh. Acharya. This is number four. Paramada, param, Paramada Tipani Tika, the elucidation of ultimate meaning by Lady by Sawado. Lady Sawado of Burma, 1846 to 1923, was one of the greatest scholar monks and meditation masters of the Tevarada tradition in recent times. He was the author of over 70 manuals on different aspects of Tevarada, of, Tevarada, of Tevarada Buddhism, including philosophy, ethics, meditation, practice, and Pali grammar. His tika created a sensation in the field of Abhidhamma studies because he pointed out 325 places in the extreme Vibhavini tika where he alleged that errors and misinterpretation had occurred. Though his criticism also set off a reaction in defense of the older work. Okay, thank you so much. Uh. I think your tongue uh, is curling right <laughs> it's a pali huh? okay sometimes one son we just read pali uh, we take it as a malay lah. just read as a malay huh? that will be fine already huh? even though not 100 percent accurate huh? okay so let's take a look how huh? we digest this too huh?
Okay, class, let's take a look. So meaning to say that uh, 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 we are known that uh, there's about two people, two figures uh, uh, come up. Uh. One is the Sumangala Sami and the second is the Lady Seado. Uh. Both are quite famous. Uh. Number one, uh, he using uh, he, uh, he he tried to uh, uh, I mean he used uh, a lot of uh, I mean the authoritative uh, uh, commentary to command uh, uh, the Abhidhamma. Uh, especially uh, we just uh, we mentioned the Visuddhimaga uh, uh, Parabata Manjusa Matika. So meaning to say there's a reason why uh, the book we study now uh, the commentary of Abhidhamma is the beginner is the beginner is the beginning I mean it's the beginner as the beginner uh, to further to the Visuddhimaga. So it's number one. Huh? Okay, once uh, the Sumanganga Sami huh, uh, 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 do a lot of command, but the Lady Siado is somebody who tried to pinpoint a lot of mistakes. Huh? He mentioned there's the 325 mistakes in the books. So it makes him very famous. Huh? Uh, anyway, uh, even though uh, he tried to criticize it, but uh, uh, the, the, uh, this, I mean, this uh, uh, Abhidhamma Anutika is still very famous. Okay, huh? and then uh, uh, it's still very famous. And finally, uh, I mean, we, we, uh, even though you try to challenge, uh, I mean, a group of people, they will try to defend uh, for that, for it. Lah, uh. So this is how we see it. Uh. Okay, class, let's take a look. Uh. If that's the case, uh, if you try to refer back here, see. Okay. If let's say this is the, uh, the author, uh, we call it as Anuruddha. Okay, huh? so the guide one, huh? may I know who is the major author for the guide number one? Huh? Kit, huh? What do you think? Who is the major author? Huh? Acharya Sumangalasami. <laughs> yes, okay. If let's say, uh, if let's say we, we, we notice some controversy issue within here, there must be Acharya Sumangalasami and try to debate with somebody. Who is it? Lady Sayadaw. Yes, correct. Huh? Meaning to say, you are not daydreaming. Applause with your kid. Okay, huh? so one thing we notice here, huh? hey, class, if let's say, if you wish to be famous, uh, huh? you can do something to make yourself famous. Because uh, at that time, this commentary uh, by Sumanka Sam is very famous. Okay, so Lady Saido can, can, can be famous uh, by criticizing this. Uh, huh? Do you think uh, huh? if you want to make yourself famous, uh, what can you criticize uh, to make yourself famous, uh, you think? Uh? Yes, Mr. Lem. How do you how do you how can you make yourself famous by criticizing uh, something which is widely accepted by the public, especially for this? Difficult to say last uh, year. Not, uh, not difficult. If you try to criticize the Western pure land, then the whole world becomes an enemy already. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I mean. Uh, actually, this thing happened before. Huh? Have you heard about uh, Angel and Demon? The book by uh, how to say uh, uh, who is the author? Huh? Angel and Demon, Dan Brown, yes. You know about that or not? Oh. So this is quite famous. Dan Brown famous for this book, oh. Angel and Demon. Oh. Let's take a look. This is the one. Oh. Angel and Demon by Dan Brown. Uh, why, why the books uh, make him so famous? The reason is uh, uh, he bring up a controversy. Uh, he, he, he brought up a controversy issue with regards to Christ, you know. He mentioned that uh, some people believe uh, Jesus uh, has some offspring, you know. Ah, if let's say you say Jesus uh, has some offspring, meaning to say that you try to challenge the holiness of Jesus. Is this right? Am I correct? Right or not? So this is a very big issue because uh, some um, uh, certain group of people, uh, they always believe that uh, Jesus is holy and he, he wouldn't marry, you see. Ah, so that is the issue, uh, I mean, arise in the Dan Brown, this book, uh, Angel and Demon. Uh, so likewise, uh, in Buddhism, uh, if you try to bring up some issue, uh, and then, uh, 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 I mean, uh, if the issue uh, is acceptable widely uh, within the Buddhist, uh, then you can become very famous. Uh, because you invite criticism, <laughs> famous due to inviting the criticism. Uh, so Mr. Lang, that the case, the better, 
better be be silence uh, huh? ah yeah. no point for being pop, uh, popular uh, for being criticized right okay. to me no criticism no but silence yeah no but silence um uh, still you can off your camera huh? it seems sometimes the light is not that good lah. you just open your camera once necessary huh? okay so uh, a few things here let's take a look huh? number one let's see here Okay, uh, number one is the Abhidhamma Ta Biwa Binitika. So this is, uh, this is will be partial uh, of our content in the, our guide. Uh, so we, we, from here we know. Uh, so this is a very important figure, Acharya Sumangala Sami. Uh, okay, so here we know that. Uh, and then uh, if you study the Visuddhimaga, uh, I mean, uh, this book will become a common, uh, t uh, will become a, uh, I mean, uh, the book for the beginner, the reason is because of this, Visuddhimaga Mahadika. Oh. Then second uh, is uh, Paramatta uh, Dipani Dika. Oh. Paramatta, uh, uh, Paramatta Dipani Dika. So this is the one also included in our uh, compendium of Abhidhamma oh, by Lady Siado. You see, uh, in Myanmar, greatest scholar monk and meditation master, oh, uh, uh, this scenario is quite common uh, in Myanmar compared with other country. Meaning to say, if you discover somebody uh, who are the Greek scholar, but at the same time, they're also a good meditation master. Huh? It happened also in India. Uh. In India, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it depends on the area. Huh? They are the scholar. At the same time, they are the meditator also. Huh? But now a little bit different. Huh? And now, if you are the scholar, basically, they were just to the scholar, uh, the academic study in the university only. They don't really involve in the meditation. And some, if they're very good in the meditation, they cannot read the thesis and the journal, you see. Huh? So uh, this is what's happening now. Huh? We try to balance uh, how it is good. Uh, we are able to read, uh, to digest uh, the journal, uh, this journal to find, to clarify certain uh, dispute. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we must be able to meditate to get the balance between of both fields. Uh, huh? Okay, next, let's take a look. Huh? So we finish here. Uh, huh? Uh, he pointed out the mistake. Huh? So now we go to the outline of the Sangha. Huh? So what is the uh, what are we going to study now? We call it as a Sangha. Huh? What is the outline? Huh? But from here, actually, we can roughly know uh, the year, huh? the, the history uh, of our guide. Huh? So uh, you see now it's a night. Uh, this is about 1923. Huh? We just assume uh, huh? one uh, he passed away, he finished all everything once he passed away, meaning to say at least uh, 100 years ago. Huh? Our, uh, at least 100 years ago uh, for our our compendium of Abhidhamma Sangha. Uh, oh, see, uh, we got the year of the lady, Siado uh, uh, of Burma, uh, the, the, I mean the date of his death. Uh, uh. Okay, now we uh, we go through the outline of the Sangha. Uh, uh. Yeah, Juntat, can you please read the passage, uh, the Abhidhamma Sangha? Uh, uh. Okay. Okay, okay. Outline of the Sangha. The Abhidhamma, um, Abhidhamma ta, Sangaha contains nine chapters. It opens by enumerating the four ultimate realities, consciousness, mental factors, matter, and dimana, dimana. The detailed analysis of this is the project set for its first six chapters. Chapter one is the companion of consciousness which defines and classifies the 89 and 121 chitas of types of consciousness. In scope of this, in scope, these first chapters cover the same ter territory as the state of consciousness chapter of the Dhamma, Dhamma Sangani, but it differs in approach. The canonical work begins with an analysis of the first triad in the Patika and therefore initially classifies consciousness on the basis of the three ethical qualities of wholesome, unwholesome, and indeterminate. Then within those categories, it subdivides consciousness on the basis of plane into the categories of sense sphere, fine material sphere, immaterial sphere, and superabundant. The Sangaha, on the other hand, not being bound to the Matika, first divides Consciousness on the basis of plane and then subdivide it on the basis of ethical qualities. The second chapter of the Compendium of Mental Factors first enumerates the 52 
of concomitants of consciousness divided into four classes, universal, occasional, unwholesome factors, and beautiful factors. Thereafter, the factors are investigated by two complementary methods. First, the method of association, Stampa Yoganaya, which takes the mental factor as the unit of inquiry and elicit the types of consciousness with which they are individually associated. And second, the method of inclusion or combination, Sangahayanaya, which takes the type of consciousness as the unit of inquiry and elicits the mental factors that enters into the constitution of each. This chapter again draw principally upon the first chapters of the Dhamma Sangani. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, then uh, Sally, can you please read? Can you please read? Yeah. Sorry, Steve, I don't know where you are. Oh, no, no, I'm, no, I'm still looking for the page. Oh, no, wait, you just uh, look, take a look to the screen, that will be fine, huh? Okay, the uh, third chapter, okay. Uh, page 19, right? Ah, uh, yes, 19, yes. Uh, the third bit, huh? Okay. Third. So, cannot find it. Ah, uh, the screen <laughs> okay. is... Okay, yes. Never mind. The third chapter entitled Com Compendium of Miscellaneous... Miscellaneous... Cannot see. Uh. Uh, Sorry for you. Okay, uh, Sally. It is. It is okay. Uh. Okay. okay. No, too big. Okay. Now, the third chapter and title compendium of miscellaneous classifies the type of consciousness along with the their factors with respect to six to six categories: root, kitu, feeling, vidana, function, kicha, do, devra, object. Araman Mana and Base Vatu. The first three chapters are concerned principally with the structure of consciousness both internally and in relation to external variables. In contrast, the first two chapters deal with the dynamics of consciousness, that is, with its mode of occurrence. According to the Abhidharma consciousness, occurs in two distinct but in, in the training modes as active process and as passive flow. Chapter 4 explores the nature of con cognitive process. Chapter 5, the passive process free, free flow, which is prefaced with the, a survey of traditional Buddhist cosmology. The exposition, the exposition here is largely based upon the Epidharma commentaries. Chapter 4. Chapter 6. Uh, sorry, Chapter 6, Compendium of Matter turns from mental realm to material, material world. Based primarily on the second chapter of Dharma Sangani, it enumerates the types of material phenomena classifies them in various ways and, exp and explains their mode of origination. It also introduced the commentary notion of material groups, which it treats in detail and describes the currents of material processes in different realms of existence. This chapter concludes with a short section on the fourth ultimate reality. Nibbana, the only unconditional element in the system. Okay, thank With you so much. Uh, never mind, anyway, stop here. It's very long. <laughs> so okay. Okay.
Sally, will you stop here, right? Am I right, Sally? You stop here, right? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you so much. Uh. Okay. okay, class, let's take a look. Uh. So uh, we are good. We, uh, we try to uh, introduce you uh, the brief uh, of Abhidhamma. Uh. Uh, take a look. So this is our our table or the list of the table. Uh. So uh, we are in the introduction now. And take a look. This is the chapter one. In chapter one, we will introduce you regards. There's a totally eighty nine consciousness or one hundred twenty one. Huh? Uh, what does that mean? Huh? Meaning to say that the living being like you and me, huh? we are living here. Okay. Then uh, according to the Dharma, huh? we are not the only one in the cosmology of the Buddhists. Actually, we still got some dewa, you know. Okay, oh, we call it as the jhana level, and also after here, uh, 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 besides us, and also the rupa jhana, there will be one step we call it as the immaterial sphere. So I mean, uh, uh, from uh, I mean, uh, uh, no matter how, uh, I mean, uh, we got three category, and also we have got some sage. No matter how, uh, what, what is the mental consciousness that arise, but totally is eighty nine or hundred and twenty one. So meaning to say that you cannot run away from this 121 or 89. If you study finish the whole 89 or 121, meaning to say that you will understand every single chitta, every single thought la, for all the beings according to cosmology of the Buddhists. Sounds good? <laughs> you, don't, you don't look happy huh? because you think of 89. Huh? Oh. Uh, it's very tough already huh? uh, not really actually if you go through uh, you will notice that uh, wherever mental state arise in you uh, you can check through it so this is uh, according to the chapter number one okay uh. then we go to the chapter number two let's take a look in chapter number two uh, we talk about the mental factor uh, meaning to say that it's like a chetasika uh. what is the chetasika uh? okay for example if let's say uh, this is the orange uh, Okay, tan, if let's say an orange, you try to peel the orange, uh, what is the component uh, uh, consists of a, a orange uh, in, in an orange? Can you mention to us? Orange. Uh. You have uh, the skin. Yeah. Okay, you have the skin. Uh, uh, yes, uh, wait. Uh, okay, uh, tan, uh, please. Uh, so this is the orange. Uh, uh. Yes, okay. Uh. Yeah, besides the skin, what else? You have the, 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 the fresh, I mean, the, the, the part that we eat. You know, yes, the and, fresh. Then, and then you have the juice, the juice. and then uh, you have the seeds. Yes, okay. So, uh, Tana, if let's say, uh, according to you, we try to segregate all different parts. Do you see any orange anymore? They are parts, they are not a, a wholesome, it is not a uh, orange. So, the orange no more there, right? If you try yeah. to segregate, uh, but, uh, yeah. uh, but all the part combines together, we call it as an orange, right? Yep. Likewise, 52 chatasika is the component within, I mean, our chitta. If we try to segregate it, uh, I mean, uh, it is also, we can discover that, uh, I mean, uh, that, uh, at least uh, there will be 52 chatasika. If let's say you try to segregate the chitta, like the orange has been segregated, then you don't see any orange anymore. Okay, get it? Oh, so this is how we understand chapter 2. Oh. So 52 chatasika, meaning to say that, uh, just now we mentioned 89 consciousness but no matter how you try to segregate them uh, the, i mean the condenser cannot it still uh, limit uh, to the 52 chetasika okay uh, so that's how we study the chapter number two so meaning to say that uh, once you finish chapter number one and chapter number two you will understand that all the beings including yourself every moment I mean, uh, uh, the, arising, the arising of your consciousness, uh, you are able to analyze them. Okay, uh, so this skill, we give them a name as uh, Vipassana. Get it? Uh, uh, get it? Uh, uh, this is very crucial. The reason is uh, for, for you and I, uh, uh, we know that our, our mind arising, uh, uh, and also the mind arising uh, in a way like a flow of the river, right? In active form, right? Okay, but it goes so fast. Okay, uh, and it makes us feel that uh, our mind, our mental state, it looks like so real and look like it is ourself. See or not? So this is the problem, you know. So uh, the, I mean, uh, the Abhidhamma try to do is try to, I mean, segregate. Uh, we make your, uh, the river, uh, the heart of like a river, we try to stop it and try to analyze every single thought. And from every single thought, you're able to analyze uh, what is the component within. 
If that's the case, uh, is there any cell anymore? Elena, if that's the case, do you know this any cell? No more already, right? Uh, so that is the skills uh, of Vipassana, uh, which is only available in Buddhist. You cannot find in other school. In, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, non-Buddhist school you cannot find. So this is very unique in Buddhist and also in Abhidhamma. Uh, even though maybe in the Pure Land school, in the Mantra school, they don't do in this way. Here we do in this way uh, to make you realize that the perception of the non-self. Uh, and then of course, uh, we still need some uh, chapter number three uh, to, I mean, uh, uh, to have a, a comprehensive understanding uh, of, I mean, uh, of the process of the learning. You see, uh, okay, uh, okay. So you see, you hear the sound, right? So you hear the sound, okay. Uh. Yes, uh, Mr. Leong, you hear the sound, right? Okay, huh? so in order to hear the sound, okay, huh? what uh, I mean, uh, what is necessary? Uh, I mean, to make to make you can hear the sound, you need what organ? You have to have two hands. You have to force to clap the two hands. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so many to say I when I, I clap, uh, okay, this is the sound. Right? So the sound come to where which part first? To the ear. Yeah, to the ear, meaning to say you need an ear faculty, am I right? All right. Yes. Oh, okay, if let's say you are dumb, are you able to hear if the nerve gone? No, oh, right? No, okay. Oh. By hearing the sound, is the, is the nerve in the ear, is, is, is this enough? No. Is, you need the assistance from which part of the body again? Yeah, the contact. Con uh, yeah, 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 we contact the sound. Oh. Uh, so which part of the body interpret the sound? The brain. Yes, the brain. So we call it as an occipital part. Okay, huh? so meaning to say, in order to hear the sound, we need the door. We call it as a, this is a door, all right? We get the sound. The sound, we call it as an object. We need an object. We need the door. And also, uh, here, uh, I mean, uh, in order to, 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 to have a sound consciousness, meaning to say we still need, need the nerve in the ear, right? Okay, so we arise the consciousness from the sound. And the consciousness we channel to our brain, and then our brain will interpret the sound. Okay, so Mr. Leung, do you prefer this sound? Do you like it or not? No, you don't like it. So, you, so you see, uh, once you say you don't like it, you need to say your brain uh, try to judge, and you will yeah. take action, right? You say, please stop acting, right? So, this is the whole thing, uh, it occurs in our brain, but in Abhidharma, we mentioned it's a mind door process. See not? So, in chapter three, we study each one by each one very clearly okay huh? so chapter number one two three is very fundamental very important in order to understand the connective process okay huh? what's the meaning uh, the meaning of the connective process mean to say that the mind is in the active way so for example just now mr leong hear the sound our mind is very active so besides how uh, we listen to the sound what else is the active way i mean uh, 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 i mean uh, you can put an example yes uh, cj can you tell me Besides the hearing, it's a very active way. What else is the active way in our mind? Uh, besides the ear hearing, then here, the eye. Eye. Yeah, we eye see the thing, right? Uh, eye consciousness also Vision. is very active. Besides? Nose. And? Smelling, smelling. And taste, the tongue. Yeah, nose. Tongue. Yeah, and the tongue. And, and what else? And our body. Yeah, our body we are touching right okay huh? yes but more than that besides this okay huh? what else some more for the brain itself without involving all the faculty the mind yeah yeah what what the mind you do huh? uh Jungjie, what what a uh, cj what what uh, uh, what does the mind uh, uh, uh what, what what do your mind do uh, huh? if let's say you do keep, nothing, keep thinking uh wondering the past the present and maybe the future a more simple way is a daydreaming right <laughs> uh, daydreaming okay. yes okay class can you stop the daydreaming can you stop it cannot right so meaning to say that our mind always in an active way in the daydreaming and cj disappeared himself already i think i think he pressed the wrong button he disappeared already okay oh, okay he got a sign kick so meaning to say that so besides this uh, actually we still have higher level uh, at the active i mean a uh, high level activity of the brain in the active way okay without involve all this faculty uh, what can you put an example yes junta 
what are the highest level of activity in our brain? Chunta, yes. Uh, I think it's uh, is it meditative? meditative? Yes, jhana. One is the jhana. One more is the vipassana. Ah, the I mean we call it as the nibbana. Huh? So they are the highest state, which is solely involved in the brain. We call it as a mind only, without involving the eye, ear, nose, tongue. Correct? Okay, huh? So this we call it as a active way, huh? uh, uh, I mean uh, the active mind, huh? But the opposite of the active mind. There will be a passive mind. So what is the passive mind? According to Abhidhamma, dying is a process, is, is, the, is the passive process. Once you pass away, or once you die, that is the passive way. If let's say you die is the passive, what is what is the opposite? Opposite of dying? Huh? Huh? Yes, the birth also. Because uh, actually in Abhidharma, uh, we call it, I mean, the definition of the birth also in the single consciousness only. We call it the birth, and also one more is a uh, die. Uh. So, Tiongke, once you birth, okay, what the first moment of the birth and the last moment of the die, so what is in the middle, uh, Tiongke? Middle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to call, right? Okay, maybe CJ no. Okay, CJ, what is the in the middle? Uh, when you okay, what uh, when you take when, uh, uh, the first moment is the birth, right? The last moment is the die, what? So what is the middle? Huh? Living. Uh. <laughs> okay, in Abhidharma we call it as a vibanga. Okay, huh? So vibanga meaning to say, you see, uh, the first moment. Uh, I mean, uh, we birth, right? Okay, the first moment, uh, how uh, uh, how. Uh, the exact moment is uh, once uh, the cement uh, uh, also, I mean, uh, the, the insemination between the cement and also the, the ovum comes together. Uh, the first moment of the birth occur already. All right. Then uh, this we call it as a fetus is getting growing, right? Growing, growing, growing. And then uh, in our mother worms, okay, after nine months, so we are, we, we, uh, 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 I mean, uh, 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 with um, the mother will deliver the birth, okay, the uh, deliver the baby, and the baby is getting grow, we uh, getting growing until to the old age, right? Uh, until the moment, the last moment he die, then we call it as the death. So that is the last moment. We call it as a passive mind. But in between all this, there will be some, 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 something, uh, which, which, which try to sustain our living. Uh, we call it as vibanga. So all this uh, is in the chapter number five uh, chapter number, uh, in chapter number five la, oh. so besides this we also mentioned all the karma oh. Oh, uh, this is the karma that is the karma you mentioned everything here oh, including the cosmology oh. so this is until to the chapter number six okay oh. so class take a look uh, i try to use a very simple english uh, to to uh, to, uh, to mention you all uh, oh, because uh, if you go through this, uh, we are very tedious. Uh, huh? So let's see. Okay, let me try to uh, I mean clarify some words. Uh, huh? So you see uh, in the chapter number one, okay, it's 89 and one to one consciousness. Okay, huh? then uh, we have a different way to categorize uh, unwholesome, unwholesome, unwholesome in determine. Huh? So we go through in our, our uh, once we go through the chapter one, we go through in detail. Uh, huh? And besides, you see, we got a sense fear fine material sphere, immaterial sphere. So this is what Chuntak mentioned. Five, a fine material, immaterial sphere is regards the jhana. Ah, meditation, we call it as a meditation. But what I mentioned regards the Nibbana, this is in the supra mandate. So class, in order to experience all this consciousness, you don't need to I mean, you don't need to go to the set, uh, the the fine material sphere or immaterial sphere. No need. You can train yourself. Oh, if your mind, you always train yourself in the fine material sphere. For example, first jhana. Okay, you always you train it intensively. Once you die, so your next life will become the first jhana. You will be living in the first jhana day. See or not? Oh, so so this is a uh, where do you go? Oh, uh, is in the chapter number five all right and you try to practice the jhana we will tell you in chapter number four so it seems every chapter is very important right so please don't don't quit the class uh, just study until you finish <laughs> okay uh, so so that you can thoroughly understand the whole thing uh, uh, but of course uh, the most important thing you have to go to meditate uh, you have to go to meditate and experience the whole thing okay 
Then next, let's take a look. In chapter 2, uh, just now we mentioned 52 chapter 6, uh, we use orange uh, as an analogy. Uh, uh, all right. Then chapter 3, 6 category, uh, like uh, uh, just now Mr. Leung tried to mention, we got the root, we let you know later on. Uh, then we got the feeling for 189 consciousness, all, all the mind, we got the feeling. Uh, and then uh, uh, this is the thing involved, it's a door the object and the base. We need these three things uh, in order to make the connective process occur in our mind, all right? So this is the first three chapter, is the structure of the consciousness. Then you see, I use the words connective process, active process, and the passive flow, all right? As we mentioned just now. Huh? Then we go to the chapter number six, is regards the matter. Lah. Then before this is the cosmology, we'll study in the chapter number five. Huh? Uh, just how we mentioned, the moment you birth and you die, and also the vibanga. Lah. Okay, huh? now we go to the with the chap sixth chapter. Huh? Yes, all right. Uh, okay, CJ, can you please read this passage with the sixth chapter? Huh? With the sixth chapter, Acharya Anu Anuruddha has completed his analytical exposition of the four ultimate realities, but there are remain several important subjects which must be explained to give a complete picture of the Abhidharma. These are taken up in the last three chapters, chapter number seven and the compendium of the categories arrange the ultimate realities into a varieties of categorical schemes that fall under four broad headings. A compendium of defilements, a compendium of mixed categories, which include items of different uh, ethical qualities, a compendium of the requi requisites of the enlightenment, and a compendium of the whole an all-inclusive survey of Abhidharma ontology. This chapter leans heavily upon the Vibhanga and to some extent upon the Dharma Sangani. Chapter number eight, the companion of the conditionality is introduced to include the Abhidharma teachings on the interrelatedness of the physical and mental phenomena, thereby complete complementing the analytical treatment of the ultimate reality with a synthetical treatment laying bare on their functional, functional correlations. The expositions summarily present two alternative approaches to conditionality found in the Pali Canon. One of the methods of depends arising prominent in the suttas and analyzed from both Sutanta and Abhidharma angles in the Vibhanga 6. These methods examine conditionality in terms of the cause and the result pattern that maintain bondage to samsara, the cycle of the birth and death. The other is the method of Pantana and the 24 condition, conditional relations. This chapter concludes a brief account of concepts, Panyati, thereby drawing in the Pung, Pungala Panyati, at least by implication. Okay, thank you so much. CJ, I'm quite sure you don't speak to your patient in this way. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> never, okay, never. Uh, yeah, quite never. Uh, yeah, chapter number nine, uh, please, uh, uh, Mr. Leong, the ninth and the final chapter, please. Okay. Uh. The ninth and final chapter of the Sangaha is concerned not with theory, but with practice. This is the compendium of meditation subjects. This chapter functions as a kind of summary of the Visuddhi Marga. It concisely surveys all the methods of meditation ex exhaustively explained in the later work, and it sets forth condensed accounts of the stages of progress in both systems of meditation, concentration, and insight. Like the master work, it summarizes 
it concludes with an account of the four types of enlightened individuals and the attainments of fruition and cessation. This arrangement of the Abhidham, Abhid, Abhidhamata Sangaha perhaps serves to underscore the ultimate sartoriological intent of the Abhidhamma. All the theoretical analysis of mind and matter finally conveys upon the practice of meditation, and the practice culminates in the attainment of the supreme goal of Buddhism, the liberation of the mind by non-clinging. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, finish, right? Let me see. Uh, yeah, finish already. Yeah, okay. Uh. Yes, Hui Bing, can you tell us uh, what is the ultimate goal of study Abhidhamma? You can get the answer in the last paragraph and the la in the last sentence. Hui Bing, yes. Ah, on the mic, please, Hui Bing. Yes. Nibbana, maybe? Yes, yeah. 
uh, as you see here, you see a supreme goal is the mind by non clinging. Huh? So in order to attain to the supreme goal, there will be two important components we have to practice. What is it? Lah? Two components. Yeah, here is uh, through meditation. Yes, and, and, then, and to, to turn inwards to look inside. Yeah, concentration inside, that's true. So this is uh, in what chapter is it? Final chapter, chapter 9. Yes, uh, this is the final chapter. Okay, oh. so uh, basically, uh, class, you will notice that uh, uh, from chapter number 1, 2, and 3, anybody feel that it is very technical? You try to analyze so many things. Guan San, do you think that it is quite technical the way you, put it, you try to put it right? Okay, oh. so do you think it is necessary after you segregate the thing, technically, you have to combine all them together? Guan San, do you think it is necessary? Um, oh, the, answer, the answer is yes or no. Huh? So it's yes, yes or no. Yes, right. Okay, so let me try to guide you. If it's a yes, uh, actually in chapter number eight, we try to put all things together. Number one, we call it as what? Conditionality. Okay, so what is the condense? It means what? Interrelatedness of physical and mental phenomena. Yes, so that is this chapter why we have to study it. So meaning to say that uh, after we try to segregate everything, we have to combine all together, make it look like the whole system more complete. See, get it? Uh, so this is how are we going to study. Uh. So there will be two important parts. Number one is the dependent or arising. Second one is the 24 conditional relations. So class, do you get it? Uh, so this is in the chapter number eight. Okay, huh? Then uh, in chapter number six, we come uh, uh, number seven, we take a look. So number seven uh, basically is to arrange the ultimate reality into a variety of the categorical scheme. It means what? Uh, huh? So class, uh, huh? okay, uh, Elena, yeah, okay. Elena, if let's say you go through some study, uh, huh? you will discover the word wisdom, prashnya, panya, all this. Do you think, are they same or different, you think, Elena? Uh, on the mic, please. You think they are same or the different? Huh? Uh, on the mic, uh, yes. Uh, maybe you press the screen and then everything will appear. Uh, then on the mic. Ah, uh, okay. Huh? You haven't got it yet. Never mind. You try a little later on. Huh? So basically, all these different words, uh, the terminology will be explained is in the chapter number uh, seven. Huh? Uh, it's in the chapter number seven. All right. So that is the whole thing uh, from the Abhidhamma you are going to study. Okay. Huh? So class, uh, maybe uh, huh? uh, some people, okay, uh, you, you just try your best. Uh, huh? We'll go through chapter by chapter. Okay. Uh, and we try to make it more simple. Uh, I can tell you, uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, this Abhidhamma, if you study it, the knowledge for meditation and the theory is more than enough. It's really enough. It's really sufficient. Uh, uh, the way I, I put it, uh, uh, why? Uh, uh, actually, I conduct a seven, a seven level uh, in Chinese Mandarin class. Why I'm able to do so? Because my fundamental in Abhidhamma is solid. Because uh, before, before the Abhidhamma is a Nikaya. Nikaya is just like a flower, fly, you know, so without any, I mean, uh, without any water uh, mixing with it, without any process of making, it cannot become a bread. The way I see Abhidhamma is like a bread. After it's the production uh, from making the flour with the yeast and, and also the whole uh, baking process. Okay. But you just try to sell the bread, it's too hard to eat, it's too organic and healthy. So uh, what to do? We have to put some more cream in it so later on uh, you will try to i mean uh, try i mean uh, the buddhism try to develop from abhidhamma to the yoga chara bumi okay madhyamaka yoga chara bumi and the secret school uh, so we call it out uh, especially the last one secret school uh, we know this a lot of cream have been put on the bread to make it more uh, marketable you see more people can uh, uh, will take the bread uh, but the problem is uh, sometimes uh, people they buy the bread they eat the cream and throw away the bread so that is the problem uh. so we discuss later on uh, uh. so i just let you know uh, uh, 
uh, we'll go through this. Uh, this is Abhidharma is, is good uh, in the sense that, but uh, this is something like a specialty coffee, the like Americano and the espresso. It's very, it is not, it is not for the beginner. The, for the beginner, wow, they cannot tahan. Huh? Uh, so uh, for the beginner, huh, what, what they prefer to do, okay, if let's say I sell the Americano and espresso, huh, I think uh, if I just solely sell it, uh, I can't get any sales. Uh, huh? So we ask Guan San, huh? Guan San huh? what to do huh? to, to make my coffee more sealsable? Huh? Guan San? Ah. Uh, marketing. Okay, your face shows that you don't drink coffee. Huh? Let me guide you. Huh? Okay, if let's say the Americano, huh? I put some milk, huh? we call it as what? I don't know, sorry. <laughs> ah, yeah. We call it as a latte when we put the milk. Okay. Well, if you put some cocoa powder, it become what? Mocha. Yeah, mo yeah, yeah, yeah. Mocha? Not mocha, but ah. mocha. Huh? Chocolate, ma. Chocolate. Chocolate mixed with the coffee, put it as what? Mocha espresso. Mocha. Mocha, all right. Ah, yes, a mocha. Okay, if I just purely put the sugar, we call it as what? I copy all. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. Uh. We just put sugar copy all. So meaning to say that if you just sold the Americano, uh, people they would don't want to drink one. You have to mix a lot of things, become a variety of product, uh, then you get a customer, you see. Same. Abhidhamma just like Americano. It's not easy to attract people. So we have to put more things uh, uh, to have a different, different product and, and can sell up to the people and can reach out to the people. Oh. Do you remember? Uh, Elena? Do you remember you offer me uh, the crib drip, right? You know, okay. You know how many I, uh, you know how many years I take out, uh, uh, I take in order to adapt to the taste of the original taste of coffee without adding any sugar and milk. You know how long I take? A month? No, two years. Uh. <laughs> yeah, two years I have to mix with all the sugar and the milk until one day I don't know why eh, I enjoy the original taste, then I cannot go start already. Oh, same uh, oh. class after you study Abhidharma, oh, then you go to listen uh, to the Dharma talk, the general Dharma talk. You feel that the taste is not strong. It's not, I mean, uh, you feel that, uh, I mean, uh, okay. uh, uh, CJ, do you feel that or not? Because you have already finished Abhidharma. Is general Dharma talk interesting to you? Is this attractive to you? Yeah, no more already. See or not? Ah, okay. Oh, a good news for you. Ah, uh, uh, so coming. Ah, uh, if you, uh, if you're able to, uh, I mean, uh, understand the Chinese. Ah, uh, we will do uh, the three day, two night Abhidhamma camp, and we try to dilute it uh, with a lot of water and put a lot of uh, milk and sugar. Ah, uh, in uh, in our April. Uh. so welcome to join the class. And here proudly announced that we got one lecturer and the counselor. Come counselor. So CJ is the one. Oh, Proud to him. Ah, okay. Oh. oh, CJ already gone through the final examination, uh, passing with a flying color. Uh, uh, we are not that good in English, but Chinese we can master better. Uh. And then uh, Hu Yiping also promised joining. Uh. He knows the Mandarin. Yes, oh, Proud uh, again. Okay, uh, the, uh, that one actually, uh, uh, maybe uh, actually for a beginner, they should try to drink some latte and mocha in the first place. But this class uh, is the Americano. Uh, so please, uh, you have to be endure. Like me, uh, you ha I have uh, we mix a lot of uh, sugar, uh, milk uh, to make you can continue uh, to listen to the class. Uh. But if you cannot tahan, uh, I also cannot help. Uh, okay, uh. Uh, so uh, who else understand the Mandarin? Tiongkit, would you like to join the uh, the the latte and also the latte class and the mocha class? Would you like to join? In uh, not sure yet. Uh, so not not sure, sure yet. You can think about that. Hey, how about Junta? You want the latte class or not, or you prefer this Americano class? <laughs> I only can drink Americano because I cannot drink uh, milk. <laughs> okay, okay, Americano. So you just uh, maintain Americano. Then the rest, uh, due to the language problem, just keep on the Americano class. Okay, oh, then the rest who understand Mandarin, you can try the latte class first. Oh, uh, from, the, from the latte you enjoy, uh, then you can shift to Americano easily. Get it or not? Oh, okay, oh. okay, so we start to chapter number one now. Okay, so let's take a look. We go to the chapter number one. Oh. Okay, in order to make the Abhidharma more interesting, uh, we have to do some a little bit of uh, analysis 
very uh, analysis in the first place. Uh. Okay, uh, never mind. Uh. So uh, we begin with the chapter number one, Compendive of Consciousness. Elena, can you please read the passage? Having respectfully salute her, uh, please. Having respectfully saluted the fully enlightened one, the peerless one, along with the sublime teaching and the noble order, I will speak the manual of Abhidhamma, a compendium of the things contained in the Abhidhamma. Guide to chapter one. Having respectfully saluted, it is an established practice in the Pali Buddhist tradition for expositors of the Dhamma to begin their exposition with the words of homage to the triple gem, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, the ultimate refuge for all who seek to undistorted comprehension of actuality. Thus, following this custom, with deep devotion to the author Acharya Anuruddha, opens his treatise with a verse of praise in which he expresses his veneration for the triple gem. A thought of veneration directed towards a worthy object is a wholesome karma that generates merit in the mental continuum of the person who gives rise to such a thought. When this veneration is directed towards the most worthy objects of homage, the triple gem, the merit generated is vast and powerful. Such merit accumulated in the mind has the capacity to ward off obstruction to the fulfillment of one's virtuous undertakings and to support their successful completion. Moreover, for a follower of the Buddha, the writing of a book on the Dharma is a valuable opportunity to develop the perfection of wisdom, Pana parami, parami. Therefore, when beginning this work, the author expresses with blissful words of praise his joy at gaining such an opportunity. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, in the chapter number one, uh, we begin uh, with the praise. Uh, uh, so here we say, uh, uh, having respectfully salute the fully enlightened one, the peerless one, along with the sublime teaching and the noble order, blah, blah, blah. Uh, basically, uh, uh, this is the author, the, the expositor. Uh, in the very beginning, they have to praise to the triple gem. Uh, why? Because this is a good karma. Okay, uh, this good karma, the value of the good karma is uh, once you do the meditation, it will eradicate the obstructions of uh, uh, mental, the mental obstruction. Uh, and second, the accumulation of the good karma, uh, it will be fruitful in our past life, in the, in the next life, uh, uh, we will become a good, good, uh, how to say, good vipaka, good resultant in the next life. Uh. So it's very good for you, uh, for us uh, to salute the triple gem. Uh, Okay, uh, basically, uh, some uh, besides, I mean, uh, writing the exposition, uh, uh, sometimes people before the ceremony, uh, uh, they also will uh, my, uh, salute uh, the triple gem. Uh, okay, uh, my, uh, I mean, I express my highest gratitude uh, and appreciation to the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. This is a good practice. Uh, okay, uh, 
so uh, this is in the first paragraph huh? so class uh, uh, if let's say huh, it depends on the people huh? some people they feel very joy huh? when they see the triple gem they come to the temple and bow may i know who feel the joy uh, once you see the buddha statue anyone okay mr leo mrs leo scj Sally. okay very good huh? if, if let's say uh, for you you can raise up uh, this mental state easily uh, it is good uh, huh? Number one, if you do the meditation, maybe you go to the temple or maybe you meditate, meditate in front of the Buddha statue. Second, uh, before you meditate, even though you don't see them, you visualize them. Uh, once uh, the good karma arises uh, in, in a life continuum, uh, and then with the help of the good merit, you can meditate better. Or maybe you can do the transpiration of the merit. So please try to make full use uh, of a good merit. Okay, uh, so this is in the number one, uh, uh, the verse number, the guide number one. Uh, uh, now we go to the second paragraph, okay. Yes, Sally, can you please uh, read the second paragraph, the fully enlightened one? The fully en enlightened one, Sama Sam Buddha. The Buddha is called the fully enlightened one because he's the one who has who has fully understood by himself the ultimate nature of all phenomena, both in their particular and universal characteristics. The term implies the direct knowledge of all realities gained without help from a teacher. The Buddha is also called the peerless one, Atula, because his qualities and attributes cannot be matched by any other being. Though all Arahants possess the distinguished qualities of morality, concentration and wisdom sufficient to result in liberation, none possess the immunerable and immeasurable virtues with which a Supreme Buddha is fully endowed. The 10 Tathagata's powers of knowledge, the four grounds of self-confidence, the attainment of great compassion, and the unobstructed knowledge of omniscience. Hence, the Buddha is without a peer, without all sentient beings. As it is said, there is one person, Bhikkhus, who is unique, without a peer, without counterpart, incomparable, unequal, matchless, unrivaled, the best humans, the Tathagata, the Arahant, the fully entitled, enlightened one. The sublime teaching. Sada Dhamma. The teaching or Dhamma signifies the three aspects of study, Pariyati. Practice, Patipati, Patipati, and realization, Patividha. Study is the study of tripka, Tripitaka and the scriptures, which record the teachings of the Buddha, comprising the three collections of the Vinaya the sutras and the apidama. Practice is the threefold training in virtue, concentration, and wisdom. Realization is the penetration of all supramundane parts and attainment of the noble fruits. Each of these is the foundation for the next. Since study provides the guideline to practice, and practice brings the big breakthrough to realization. The, the teaching is called sublime in the sense of true and good because when it is applied in accordance with the Buddha's instructions, it, is de it definitely leads to the attainment of Nibbana, the supreme truth and the highest good. Okay, thank you so much. Welcome.
okay, class, let's take a look. We go back to a very basic thing. Is number one is the definition of the fully enlightened one. Uh, basically, why we call him as the Buddha? Number one, he can realize without any teacher. Okay, uh, same with the Pracheka Buddha, both of them can enlighten without teacher. Okay, uh, why they can enlighten without teacher? Uh, uh, yes, Junta. Why without teacher? They can both both of them can enlighten. What do you think? Uh, why why you mean the why this uh, uh the Buddha did, did not have a teacher, right? Uh, and the Pacheka Buddha without teacher they can realize why huh? So if if that's the case, uh, where did they learn the skill of Vipassana? Where when did they learn? Or oh, in their past life they also have this uh, already gained this uh, insights. Yes, everything must relate to the past life. It could, because uh, if we don't relate to the past life, uh, there's no cause and effect already, right? Uh, so it's related to the past life. So since uh, they got the skills already, but maybe this life they forget, they need some factor to trigger it out. So Shakyamuni is under the body tree. Uh, suddenly he realized that he recalled uh, his past life, Vipassana, the skills, and then uh, he able to uh, contemplate the Patika Sambhubada uh, and he become a Sama Sambhubada. That's number one. Second is, is because of the Buddha can fully understand what? I mean, uh, chapter number one, 89 consciousness, chapter number 2, 52 cons, uh, uh, mental factor, and the, and the uh, materiality in the chapter number 6, Shakyamuni can fully understand all of them very well. And then they can understand them, uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, they are their nature and also their common nature. So that is why we call them uh, as a Samya Sambuddha. Uh, basically, uh, uh, it's quite hard for us uh, uh, to understand in this respect, this aspect without studying the Abhidhamma, you see. Uh, both in their particular and universal characteristic. Universal characteristic meaning to say is the Anicca Tukka Anatta. Uh, the particular, it means what is the nature. Uh, so uh, usually uh, we will use the word, uh, the ultimate nature of phenomena. It's very general, but actually here it means uh, the content of the chapter number one, two, and chapter number six. Okay, uh, so this is uh, this uh, this is uh, the definition for the sama sambuddha. Uh, and secondly, uh, even though arahant also uh, enlightened, but the difference is the arahant doesn't have a great compassionate, unobstructed knowledge of omniscience. Uh, so we say samya sambuddha is still unique or uh, compared to the arahant. It's still better than them. All right. So this is number one. Second is regarding to the sublime teaching. Huh? Uh, basically, once we talk about the sublime teaching, it means Pariyati, Patipati, Pativeda. Number one, you have to study first. Why? Because uh, without the study, uh, where do you get the map and start your journey? Huh? So we start to study. Huh? So what to study? Basically, what to study uh, in, in, uh, in order to go to the second for the practice? Yes, SJ. Uh, yeah, in the simple language, uh, what? Okay, uh, okay. Do you need to study the history of Buddhism for enlightenment, SJ? CJ, CJ, not SJ. Yes. Is history of Buddhism necessary for enlightenment, CJ? Uh, history, history. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, not, not that necessary. Okay, huh, okay. So we say, uh, you have to know one scope uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the meditation. Huh? What scope are they? You should you have to know, CJ. Because what scope of the Dharma we have to know, huh? <laughs> and it has been mentioned just now actually. <laughs> you got one scope. You see, ah. Uh, now let's take a look. You see, ah. Uh, once we talk about the scope of the Dharma, you have to, you must have uh, for the uh, uh, to do the vipassana. Huh? So, what chapter you think is quite necessary as a fundamental? Chapter one. Then. Chapter two. Chapter yes, three. Then. One more is regarding is. Chapter six. Yes, it regards what five aggregate. Ah, so we talk about the uh, the study. Uh, Actually, a uh, uh, history of Buddhism, uh, no matter in India, Chinese, not necessary for enlightenment, but they are the common knowledge. Uh, you have to know as a general knowledge. But for 
enlightenment this is a few chapter is necessary the reason uh, by understanding the nature of the 89 consciousness 52 chatasika and and 18 of the uh, matter you, you will have to integrate the knowledge with the jhana to do some analysis throughout your body ah so we, so that is why uh, uh, the study is important but not everything is for this three chapter is very important for you uh, so mr leong okay uh, uh, mr leong actually is prepared to go for uh, uh, a more profound meditation so mr leong now actually studied the abhidhamma just for the readiness for that uh, am i right mr leong uh, so this a few chapters very important for you uh. yes once i fully understand then i will know what's the <clears throat> The importance of this uh, meditation, especially ah. from this smart house. Ah, yeah. You know what we will do lah, in the meditation camp? You know, oh, actually, we do this to do that. We, 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 will, we will fully explain to you during the class. Okay, huh? Okay, so that's we call it as a pariyati. Huh? Then, uh, second is the practice. So we call it as the patipati. Huh? It's the practice. Let's take a look. A party party practice. So we need to say you have to integrate your jhana to the knowledge, the previous previous study in order can get the realization party veda. So that is the relationship between three of them. Uh, uh, but, but nowadays, uh, since we have uh, so many different schools, sometimes uh, we have been simplified the thing already. We always simplify the thing. Uh, uh, basically, for example, the Western Pure Land, okay, uh, basically, uh, that, uh, in order to make it popular, uh, we, to make it popular, we tell people that you just chant the Buddha name and go to the Western Pure Land, that's all. This is very good and simple, especially for the auntie, the old folk or uneducated people. Huh? It's very good. But it is not that good for the educated people. It's too simple already. Huh? Actually, the Dharma is not that simple. Huh? If you go through Abhidharma, you will know that. Huh? You cannot be arrogant because you know oh, this is not the simple thing. Huh? Uh, you have to be humble to really to go through it. And you need the knowledge and with the jhana and the jhana also need time to practice you see or not huh? but uh, most of our school are uh, always remember if let's say that school can get plenty of the people like a primary school so meaning to say maybe they are in the primary stage they might not be the ultimate uh, if let's say you go to the phd sure just a few people will need uh, basically same thing only huh? the highest level study must be very few people but people will confuse uh, between the phd and the primary school the top primary school uh, still can grad uh, i mean uh, it's the ultimate sometimes uh, this is the misconception uh, among our buddhists okay uh, right uh, then we go to the uh, this is we call it as a sublime teaching huh? so uh, okay so time's up already huh? okay shall i know uh, what do you think if let's say I further the class next time until to the fall? Because this Americano, I don't know when can we finish drinking it. Lor? <laughs> if let's say we just always uh, one and a half hour. Anybody agree we extend to four, mean to say two hour class? Grab a hand. Mr. Leon, Sally, Elena, Hui Ping, Guan San, yes. Sun Tat, yes. How about CJ and You cannot. 3.30 is, is, is the maximum already. Take double express solar then can ah. <laughs> yes, CJ. Three thirty ni. Can I can I extend right? I will try to join lah because ah uh, ah uh, Saturday usually is my family day. Ah yeah, you should be the family member. How come you are here? Uh? Okay, and you bet. Uh, okay, just ah uh, this is very common. Oh, okay, oh. But I think your family ah uh, is the is the plain water. The plain water is fundamental for everything. Oh, make sure you don't use ah. Uh, very cannot to I mean uh, to uh, to 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 quest your 30, 30 I mean uh, I mean uh, the guy huh? not, not that right huh? you should use the plain water huh? don't use the Americano it's not it's, it's not huh? so make sure that uh, you got time to family maybe you can just it's this early a little bit uh, together with your family how about Tiongke? Tiongke you cannot uh, can I, I can follow? I just follow. You can follow. Ah, uh, yeah. So, Sijen, never mind. Uh, uh, yeah. you, you should go 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 to your family. Three thirty, you can just. That's all. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, we we just continue lah. Uh, if everybody agree, uh, yeah, we continue. Uh, uh, yes, uh, can. Uh, yes. <clears throat> uh, can. Uh, Junta, uh, please, can you go through the passage? Uh, uh? In the noble order, Ganutama, the word Gana meaning company or group is used here as a synonym of Sangha, 
the community order. There are two kinds of Sangha, the conventional Sangha, Samuti Sangha, the order of bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, fully ordained monks and nuns. In the Sangha of noble ones, Arya Sangha, referred to in the verse of homage as the normal order. The normal order is the normal or holy community of the accomplished followers of the Buddha. That is, the four pairs of persons who have arrived at the place of the normal ones, distinguished as the eightfold, according to whether they have reached the path or the fruits of stream entry, once returning, now returning, and the arahanship. I will speak the manual of Abhidhamma. The title of the work Abhidhamma Ta Sangha literally means a companion of the things contained in the Abhidhamma, that is, in the Buddha's special or distinguished happy teaching, Dhamma, handed down in the Abhidhamma Pitaka. The author's statement, I will speak. Pasisam reminds us that our text is meant to be recited and learned by heart so that it will always be available to us as an instrument for analyzing reality. Okay, thank you so much. Robert. So class, I think we should have a five minute breaks. You can go to the toilet and have a cup of drink. Then we come back. Okay, how? Yes, okay. Wow, I leave one. Okay, so we start the recording now, we continue it. Uh, basically, once we talk about the Sangha, the monk, oh, we've got, uh, actually we have a definition. A group of the Sangha at least must be four member. Four member, oh, okay. Uh, since I stay alone, meaning to say that uh, I don't lead a Sangha community. Okay, oh. but anyway, I can lead a Sangha community by two ways. Uh. Number one, I will, I will go to look for the other three of the monk, oh, maybe my Dhamma brother monk or the monk from other temple. The second choice is I should adopt my own disciple. Oh, I got my own disciple. Oh, uh, maybe I take another tree oh, and then become a, I mean a monk community, oh, Sangha community. So option number one and number two, you think which one is the best? Yes. Um, what do you think? Number one is good, or number second one is the good? Both are equally good, except that there's a, a different way. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> number one is the worst. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Actually, number one is the partnership. Partnership actually is quite bad. The reason is uh, because if four people, they are equal. Huh? So who should listen who? Hmm. Actually, the compromise actually is not easy for being rich. So that's why partnership a business uh, sometimes cannot sustain as good as a sole proprietor. For the sole proprietor, because uh, you yourself employ your own employee, right? And then uh, if they, they, they will obey to you because you pay them salary. Uh, 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 so that is quite different with a partner. So uh, actually, basically, if you heard about uh, there will be some dispute within the monk. Uh, uh, sometimes it's due to because they are same equal. Uh, I mean, uh, this is the partnership concept. It's not the sole proprietor concept. So sole proprietor is the best. We ourselves adopt other three disciples, uh, then I am the boss, they follow me. That's the best. Uh, I mean, not easy to split, you know. And then the dispute, not that terrible. Uh, I think it happened including in Mahayana and Theravada. So Mr. Leong, uh, keep on agree by noting his hit. <laughs> you know, it happened many it's quite common already, even though Theravada, right? Mr. Leo, same. Uh, huh? Okay, so uh, sometimes uh, because we, list, we, 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 we learn from the Nikaya, the precept is very beautiful. Uh, huh? Oh, a group of the monk together, the Pindaba, they meditate. Sounds so nice, uh, but practically not that easy. Because uh, Shakyamuni no more already. Our father, mother is no, no more there, you see. Everybody have their own way to do their own thing. So finally splitting on me. Get it? Huh? Okay, huh? Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, even though uh, uh, this is the real situation, but they still got two group of the monk. One is we call it as a conventional monk. La. So like, like me, la, uh, because I'm not Arya, uh, I'm not a sage, I'm just I'm still an ordinary monk. Huh? So we call it as an ordinary monk, a conventional monk. So this type uh, uh, include the bhikkhu and bhikkhuni, we are considered fully ordained. Fully ordained meaning to say we have gone through the meeting. Uh, huh? and get the agreement from a group of the Sangha member, they agree to take us uh, as uh, 
disciple. Uh, in Chinese, uh, I mean in, in, in the Mahayana, uh, usually this ceremony is very, how to say, uh, very gigantic. Uh, uh. Maybe, uh, see, see, do I use, use a good word or not? Uh? Now you see, this is the ceremony uh, in Mahayana school. Uh. In order to become a monk, basically, uh, do you see the people who wear in the rags? Uh, uh, they don't get, can you count to me how many people, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, they, they wear in the red groups, uh, how many? Huh? Maybe 20. 20? Uh, around 20. Uh, around 20, yes. Basically, it, it, there's a 10 monks and 10 nuns. Uh. In order to become a bhikkhu, you need the permission from the 10 monks. Okay? If you want to become a bhikkhuni, you must get the permission from the 10 monks and 10 nuns. So that's why you... you your, your, uh, your, your calculation is correct. 20 in red color. Uh, that that shows the status. Uh, they, are, they are eligible to give the approval for your admission as a bhikkhu and bhikkhuni. Get it? Uh, so we call it as a full ordination. Uh, uh, we, we make it very, I mean, uh, in, a, in a more, more uh, I mean, a more formal way. Uh, that is the formal way. Uh, but in Theravada, basically, they just three monks, it will be enough because they define themselves out of the boundary of the Buddhism. Uh, because uh, they say uh, I'm not in Indian, so three people is enough. But for China and the Taiwan, we define that we are we are still in in the in the region of the Buddhism. So we have to we we need uh, ten monks and ten nun to conduct the ceremony. We call it as a, uh, I mean uh, the fully ordination ceremony. So get it okay? Huh? So that is a different uh, definition due to the different definition. Okay. Huh? So let's take a look. Huh? So here, according to here, conventional Sangha, then one more is the noble Sangha. Huh? Because we call it as a noble as the day is a four pair of a person. So you see, this is the four pair. Number one is the puff and the fruit. All right. Secondly, we'll see the stream entry number one, once returning number two, non-returning number three, and our hardship is number four. So they are all considered as a four pair because we've got puff and the fruit. For, for each each of each one of them la, uh, so uh, I mean in details we'll explain to you all in detail in the chapter number one uh. yeah Mr. Leo you raise hand please Mr. Leo uh. Uh, say for why the discrimination between the biku and bikonis uh, why the bikonis have uh, bikonis have to have 20 for full ordination Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, again, uh, you talk about the discrimination. Okay, uh, well, this is very sensitive issue. We've got to explain it because people that dislike discriminated. All right, uh, okay. Uh, okay, uh, well, basically, uh, um, because uh, uh, you have to go back to H3 in the Indian. Uh, okay, I cannot fully ex explain to you because I'm not very strong in Vinaya. Uh, but basically, as you know, uh, uh, if you want to become a bhikkhuni, huh? okay, uh, basically the bhikkhuni, they rely on the bhikkhu for sustainability. Okay, huh? uh, in Indian, basically uh, one nun is not allowed to go up. They must be accompanied by other because uh, they will be uh, for being sexually harassed. Uh, in Indian, even nowadays, uh, it's, not, it's very dangerous for a single woman to, to go to wander in India, you know. Uh, uh, how about 2000 years ago? Okay, so number one, they are very weak at that time. Okay, huh? Then uh, the nun have to be stay uh, somewhere very near the bhikkhu, so the bhikkhu can protect the bhikkhuni. Okay, huh? physically la, huh? physically huh? they can protect them la, huh? So that's why huh? uh, uh, all the bhikkhuni, in order to uh, uh, sustain, they need the support from the bhikkhu. So that's why uh, in order to adopt uh, huh? the bhikkhuni, huh? the, the bhikkhu sangha, have to go because we have to know we got to take care of them. Huh? If let's say uh, they adopt a new member without telling us uh, then we don't know it suddenly got so many nun. Oh, you see or not? Or sometimes, uh, if, let's say, uh, in the bar, uh, they are very weak. Maybe uh, we pro uh, the monk, uh, the, 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 the bhikkhu uh, will protect them in terms of physically. Uh, maybe if in the bar, the food not enough, uh, maybe we can uh, uh, share some for them. At that time, uh, the woman's status is very low. Different, different from now. Now the bhikkhuni basically, uh, they are highly high qualification compared with the monk, you know. Nowadays, the monk are not as good as the nun. The nun even can do better, you know. Ah. But but thousand years ago is a different, you see. A thousand years ago, you see. Uh, so I think that is the reason why uh, uh, the bhikkhuni uh, uh, have to let the bhikkhu know. And the bhikkhuni need 10 people to admit one people. I, 
think reasonable. Okay, oh, because uh, ten people uh, will scrutiny you, uh, your eligibility, uh, whether they want to take you or not. Because when they take you, uh, you uh, they, I mean, uh, they have to take care of you until you die, you know. Mr. Leong, uh, until you die, you know, because uh, once you become a member, uh, you start to contribute. At the same time, you get all the benefit. One of the benefit is uh, they will taking care of you in terms of all the welfare and the health. And also, until you die, you pass away. So that's why they must meet 10 Pekuni, uh, and then inform the Piku that, oh, we got one new more member. Then it become a burden, you know. Wow, many people very, very big already, uh, the, the community. Uh. So, Mr. Leung, no more discrimination. Right? Uh, no, uh, uh, reasonably <laughs> organized, uh, uh, no discrimination. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I'm so uh, yeah. Okay. But uh, usually people uh, prefer ask the question, uh, why uh, the nun uh, can become once in a lifetime, but the monk is seven? So they said, discrimination again. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Actually, according to Vinaya text, it appeared in this way. Uh, also, uh, uh, basically, I mean, uh, during at that time, uh, we don't do everything statistically. Uh, if you say, uh, the, the, actually, uh, uh, if, if you compare monk and a nun, uh, sometimes the woman, uh, maybe due to the physical, or maybe due to the hormone or what, uh, they are more fragile and more vulnerable compared to the men. Uh, they can easily change uh, the mind, uh, more hesitation uh, uh, compared with the men. So that's the reason why uh, for nun, uh, just once in a lifetime, we have to think carefully. Because uh, if, if, if we allow them changing, uh, just like hey, Asha, uh, uh, without any penalize, uh, let you keep on changing your etiquette. Uh, so everybody keep on changing the etiquette and me from the date to the time, from the time to the date, you cannot run the business already. You know? So they penalize you, you see. Hey, Asha, they penalize you for every single change. You see? Same, uh, there's some, some sort of penalize the woman. Uh, so you don't simply just, uh, or they, uh, disrobe and ordain or and disrobe. Okay. So, can the caste system uh, be involved uh, in this? Caste system, uh, uh, regards the woman. Ah, uh. uh, yes. Well, caste system, no. Because if a caste system is a whole caste, a whole caste system, uh, they, they don't bother the sex one. Oh, if you really you're the Brahmin, if you if really, if you are the, the Chatriya, so you are in, already in the group already, you will enjoy the benefit from that group. I think no caste system. But the woman's status are low at that were low is is the a woman's status okay yes uh, so we finish uh, regarding this uh, huh? okay yeah and i will speak the uh, menu as uh, Ab abhidhamma huh? uh, then uh, is the teaching uh, section number two already huh? sorry uh, Sipo. Uh, yeah yeah elena please stop. why sorry maybe i have missed out something why must what is the meaning of the four pairs of persons? Oh, four pairs. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, here is it. Uh, oh. The Elena, you see, uh, four pairs, all right. Uh, four is uh, from stream and the read, once returning, non returning in Arahanship. So it's a four, all right. What we call it as the four pair because we see here, we got the puff and the friction, you see. Puff and the friction, uh, because the puff and the friction. Huh? So uh, four times two will be the eight, right? But here we got four pair. Four pair means four times, uh, four pair, say three, four, four, eh, four, uh, four pair means eight, right? Am I correct? Uh, so that's true, right? Four times two, puff and the friction. Okay, huh? so uh, there will be the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, there will be the uh, puff for the stream entry, puff uh, for the ones returning. Path uh, for the non returning and the path for the arahanship, and then also fruit repeat the same thing. Okay, get it? Uh -huh. We'll go in detail in the chapter number one. Okay, uh -huh. and after the, after the story regarding the bikuni, time's up already. <laughs> no, no, no. We have to make this Americano become a latte and mocha, then we are able to drink for the long term, all right? Huh? So, never mind. More question, more story to make it more latte, huh? okay? Huh? So, there's no problem, huh? okay? So, before we try.